Hello, everyone. Good evening. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> it's going good. Good. I hope you're, you're doing, doing well right. this afternoon. It was a beautiful day. I hope somebody's taking some time to do a little walking outside and enjoying the breeze. It's beautiful. I think it was just absolutely gorgeous. The last couple of days, yes. it's just been pristine. Yes. It makes me makes me forget there's a, a pandemic. No. Oh. <laughs> well, it, you just have to go into any store. Except for except for today, I was reminded that there was a pandemic. We had several people that came by the church building to drop off supplies, which was good. And Cindy, you know Armstrong, came by earlier in her car and. She wouldn't get out of her car. She just rolled down the window, <laughs> and uh, she brought us toilet paper. You should have seen her trying to throw a, you, throw toilet paper out of her car. <laughs> I think she was encouraged to throw it out of the car there. Tell the whole story. Our lesson tonight is from Proverbs on honesty. On honesty. So what apt intro is to forget to tell the whole truth is the actual prodding that took place for her to throw it out the passenger side window, which was very fun. It, that was fun. The yes. Funny. Fun, fun and, and funny. funny. That's there right. you go. That's and, right. And of course, those that come by, others that did, they are wearing the masks and different things. And, you know, we got to be yeah. safe. But That's I'm hoping right. I got to hurt some news that... You know, our governor might be thinking about it even just next week. Can you imagine if they I'm just ready. Say, let's go. Let's, let's go. Let's yeah. go. And so, I hope you get your Bibles out. We'll be looking at <laughs> verses from the book of Proverbs. Honesty is the best policy. That's the lesson tonight. And uh, The whole truth. We'll be looking Nothing at the Proverbs the from yeah. the Old Testament. And so, did you know that the Proverbs were written to young people? It was really older, an older man, a dad, yes, right to his son. son. And so, when we think about Proverbs, this is not wisdom literature that's really above our head. This is, this is stuff for young people. And I just think we need to, to embrace as much wisdom as we can in this life. And, and tonight, we just talk about a very important behavior. You know, this, um, you know the cornerstone of, of an orderly society is honesty. And we... We just have we have so many laws on the books, um, you know, locally and statewide and federal and. Well, I believe it was all the way back to Exodus twenty verse six. You, sh you shall not bear false witness. You know, so I mean, it's it's from the very beginning the yeah. importance of honesty. Yeah, it's integral to every successful relationship. Uh, before we really get into the lesson tonight, we need yeah. to we need to to. I mean, just, what we don't really have any updates on anybody that yeah. I know of. If ever you would like to send in your prayer requests, we, but I think that most people are doing well as I kind of look through some of the things. I know we're just itching to get out. It's almost like uh, yeah. you get some time off to, to get, get all healed up in, in sports. So it takes some, uh, I guess it's time, what's it called? Uh, not time management, load management. And so they take a little load so the next time they come out they're fresh. And I know everybody's just itching like those horses in the races that are in the actual chute just ready to get out. <laughs> Especially when it's beautiful like yeah. this. So I hope you're doing well, but we love to pray for you if there's other needs. And then we know that there's also the struggles that some are with, uh, um, hopefully there's some stimulus or some kind of uh, unemployment for those that are, are affected that way. And um, yeah. that's something we want to keep in our prayers. Yeah. You want to lead some more prayer? Yeah, let's pray together. Okay. Our loving Heavenly Father, we ask your blessing upon all those that are listening and those that can't be we hope that the hindrance of what's keeping them from the study together will be removed that we can be encouraging and helpful and these lessons are so uh needed from your word at this time especially as we watch the news and with different things we we wonder what's the truth and what's not and we just pray that the world would be a better place if we lived by your word and we're honest and and had integrity in the things that were ever before us and lord we just pray that as christians we set forth that example lord we want to bring glory and honor to your name and the danger of hypocrisy and and falsehoods can do so much harm and lord we hope this lesson is first of all pleasing to you and edifying and helpful to the brethren as we seek to see that 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 any falsehood is uh, is against your will, and that we want to live with integrity, with reverence, and all that we say and do, Lord, are those that are might be um, uneasy or anxious about the the situations that are ever before us, we pray that there'll be a soon end and back to what normal may be, and uh, that jobs may reopen, and that people can uh, be once again uh, able to uh, feel 
that they put forth uh, some security. Lord, we, but we once again know that you're in control of all things. We lean upon you. And Lord, we may we help all people as we have opportunity, especially the household of faith, and to be your loving arms, hands, and feet to those around us. Forgive us as we do stumble. Be with our leaders, both local and national. They may seek the scriptures for the guidance in all they say and do. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. I did think of an announcement okay, that good. we need to make, and that's about Mary Hall. Oh, yes. We've, we recently, um, well, today we've received news that she's had a couple of strokes that they do not believe that she can recover from, and so um, she's on hospice that's care at this Grady time. That's Grady Duncan's aunt. See, I, most of y'all probably know. Uh, yeah. Now, where is she from? She's from here. From, she's from she here. She lives here. Or lives yeah, she, here. And she's, she's near in, 100, or she? Yeah, she's over 100. Woo! Yeah. Triple digits. Yeah. Man, God bless her. We hope that, you know, she knows how much she's loved. And yeah, she's a, let's a pray for faithful, Grady faithful Christian woman. Sister, Patsy. And she's living up in Louisville. She lived with her daughter, other daughter, Linda, for a long time over oh. there and until the last maybe six months, and they had to, she had to go to a nursing facility. So, anyway, for those of you who hadn't heard about it, most of you know about Mary Hall. Uh, if you haven't, uh, now you do. But, yeah. Thanks. Anyway. All right, so honesty is the best policy. The word honesty is not in the book of Proverbs, is it? But no. the principles are. Throughout. throughout. Yeah, throughout, 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 throughout the, the book of Proverbs. You'll see so many things about honest scales, and, you know, I'm going to say honest, but, but true, you yeah. know, in those words. And I think the, the yeah. idea is going to be clear throughout our study that even though the word honesty, honest, all yeah. those things might not be in the Hebrew translation of the King James Version, the, uh, the lessons sure are there. Well, I'll tell you what, you know, you got in Luke chapter 8, verse number 15, the parable of the sower, and the Bible tells us that some of that seed fell on good ground, which represented those with an honest heart, a good and honest heart. And, and Christians are to think on things that are honest, Philippians 4 and verse number 8, whatever things are honest. And, and that word, even in the Greek language, is deeper than just telling the truth. It, it's, uh, it's whatever things are venerable, it's uh, virtuous, honorable, uh, the word grave comes up. Yeah, I always thought yeah. about the word grave. Never really understood how that grave meant, you know, something that is valuable or virtuous, and those kind of things. But I know we had an elder there in Mount Vernon, Dalton Graves. And I yeah. tell you, he was... He was grave. Well, he was grave. He yeah. was that example. And it's yeah. just neat that you can live up to the, to the name. Well, that which inspires reverence yes. is also part of that definition. Uh, and so the thought is definitely deeper than... Uh, than the fact that one tells the truth, while that is important, uh, and it's and, and while it's important that we don't take advantage of other people in the business end of things, uh, this concept is much deeper than just that. It's um, Philippians four and verse eight, where honest is translated there. Um, whatsoever things are honest, that is that is worthy of reverence in the Greek language. Isn't that an interesting term? Yes. Think on things that are worthy of reference. Yeah, noble, trustworthy, yeah. pure. But the American, Her American Heritage Dictionary defines this thing as uh, not lying, cheating, stealing, taking advantage, unfair advantage, uh, being honorable, not characterized by deception or fraud, but genuine, uh, having or manifesting integrity and truth. Amen. Now that's just the, the, the deck. De dictionary definition yeah but that's what if you were asked what what is honest you say well not lying you know telling the whole truth but uh but it's not by deception or fraud because sometimes you can tell half truths you're not being totally genuine but i like the idea that it ended there with the manifesting integrity that's a word that you know what you you just can see it in people that no matter the pressures that they're under they re, they have a resolve that they're going to do whatever's right mm -hmm. not the easy way but what's the right way according to god's word and they have that integrity. And I think no matter if you disagree or they might seem straight, you have to respect their integrity. And I think that's something that we could, as Christians must have. Well, you know, and, and here's the thing that I, I get concerned about as Christians, and I, I have to take inventory of myself now, but, <laughs> but we, we can't compartmentalize any aspect of Christianity. Honesty has to define who we are. And, and if we wear the name Christian, that, that word should define who we are. And we might act ca uh, contrary to, um, to that character as des described in the Bible. So if there's something about us that's not honest, 
uh, then we've got to cut that out of our life so that we can be more like the definition of Christian. Yes, yeah, so it's, it's the idea that I think of just for a moment. Maybe this is not where you're going, but do you see those in your life that, in the hope that we're not that way and we've got to change if we are, that you act a certain way? And there might be a little bit of it on Sunday and on Wednesday when you come together as a congregation, then the way you do business at work or somewhere else throughout the day, like you compartmentalize the way that you're a Christian on Sunday, but then if you go to work, it's almost the pressures of other people there or things that are being said or done that you feel like, well, the boss, you feel like you're not, you're not getting paid with your worth or you justify. We're amazing at justifying, but you know God's word is 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 black and white except for what Jesus said. It's it's red, but I mean it's it's pretty straight on this area right here, and you know we got to be. There's no white lies. There's no. So so the goal is is for Christians to live honestly, consistently, <laughs> in every aspect of 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 life. When it, you know, and, and the tongue. Let's, let's just start with talking about the tongue for just a minute. Turn your Bibles to uh, Proverbs chapter two and verse number sixteen. Uh, the Bible tells us here in, in Proverbs chapter two, in verse number sixteen, uh, to deliver you from the immoral woman, from the seductress who flatters with her words. And then you look at chapter six and verse number number twenty four. Uh, that, that this commandment that he's giving is to keep you from the evil woman, from the flattering tongue of the seductress. Do not uh, lust after her beauty in your heart, nor allure your, uh, let her allure you with her eyelids. But with her words, she's a seductress. And the same thing is communicated in chapter 7, uh, verse number 21. Uh, with her enticing speech caused him to yield. With her flattering lips, she seduced him. So... So she's using speech, she's using words, she's communicating. You know, the Bible tells us by thy words we'll be justified or condemned. Here is a person who's using words to tickle the ears of someone to get a person to sin. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost like the persuasiveness, but I'm wondering here, you wonder when Flattery. she talked about a... Well, one man told me, he says, you know, we count insults sometimes as compliments and compliments as hogwash. And I thought, wow. But the flattery, you know, is, 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 better are the wounds of a friend than the kisses of an enemy. But I'm thinking right here when it talks about the woman, just for a second, not everything is, a, I guess, a metaphor, a simile, or whatever kind of analogy that I'm trying to think of. But the idea that, there's, that the world itself has the woman. Mm -hmm. And the world itself, because it just says in James 4, 4, that do, you adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? And I'm wondering if sometimes the world promotes and has that little tickling ear and that sweet flattery so. and that this book about wisdom is talking about things where the um, the seductress can be that one that's you know of the father of lies you know John 8 right. 44 you know and even back in the garden you know it's just that little subtle tickling that gives you what you want to hear everybody likes for a moment the yes people make you feel puffed up well just it's so interesting that that a person can use their tongue in a dis for dishonest gain in other words, and here's a seductress who's who's trying to get somebody to agree to sin with her. This is a dishonest uh, practice, and you know the Bible tells us that while she's completely aware of what she's doing, she's using flattery as means of enticement. That her house, verse number twenty-seven says, hell. "Yeah, her house is the way to hell." Woo. Now that's that's God is the strong. way that leads to destruction, and I'm telling you, they're just that little. You know, I don't know. I just think of, um, you know, the kind of Wicked Witch in Snow White, how she looked one yeah. way with that apple and just the way that she just tries to get somebody to think, come on in, sweetie. And, you know, you felt sorry for her. She's a little older. And then yeah. you see the reality of what she was trying to do. And I think, you know, um, beauty is only skin deep. And I yeah. think the world sometimes can, that's, that's that passing pleasure of sin. It entices you, but it's fleeting. And yep. it's going to draw you down that Broadway. Yeah, don't don't look at her beauty. Don't don't be uh, attracted by her eyelids, and don't listen to what she has to say. Chapter seven, verse number thirteen here says, "So she caught him and kissed him uh, with an impudent face. She said to him, I have peace offerings with me today. I have paid my vows.' In other words, it looks like I'm on the up yeah. and up with God. You can trust me. And of course, she is. She has a lying tongue. She is um, a seductress." And she was using her, her speech to flatter. Now, um, Proverbs 6, there are 
seven things. Oh, yes. These six things that God hate, yea, seven are an abomination to him. And one of those things a is a lying tongue. A lying tongue. Um, Titus chapter 1 and verse number 2 tells us that, that God cannot lie. You know, there's some things God cannot do. One of them is lying. <laughs> it goes yeah, he promised there the eternal yeah. life, which you cannot lie. When with that comes, <laughs> that's right. What what happens if you're not with the eternal life there with God? What's the what's the alternative? That broad way that led you into the seductress's home. Yeah. You know, and I'm thinking that you know God doesn't send anyone to her home. We choose to go to her home. Yeah, we have to listen. We have to get attracted yeah. to it. And, yeah, and then we we conceive to it, and we can never say, well, they, they, the lure was stronger than my will. Doesn't First Corinthians? Mm -hmm. Uh, ten thirteen 13 tell us that with every temptation God provides a way of escape that we're able to bear it you know and it's not something that isn't common with man so it's a real good thing to to maybe seek the wise counsel of those that truly have lived by the integrity the honesty the the kind of uh, demeanor that you can trust and so when you are tempted line yourselves up because no wonder people at times can act a certain way on Sunday or Wednesday around the congregation or the brethren because you have that strength of accountability yeah. and you see God's word come to life when you see it lived out and other people. Well, you said it a minute ago that, that Satan was the father of lies. Uh, John eight forty four. Jesus, you know, had mentioned that, and we just have to remember that the source of all lying is is really in character with the devil. That's that's what he's the father of all lies is because that's in his nature, his character. It goes with pride. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, a child will will be, you know, pretty honest, you know, until they learn one day that maybe they cannot be so truthful and get out of trouble. Yeah. And so it's it's kind of like. You know, you want to do what's easy. Yeah. And the world surely does make things easy, and no one will know. But be sure your sin will find you out. You know, just think yeah. about Achan. Well, and, and you know, there, you think about all the reasons why people would lie. Uh, people don't necessarily have to lie. At, well, they shouldn't lie at all. But what I'm saying is if you find yourself in a situation where where you, you you're trying to spare somebody's feelings, you might just say, I'm not ready to talk to you about that yet, or I'm not sure how to say what I want to tell you. I need some time to think about what I need to say to you. It would be a lot better to put them off and say, I need to think about what I'm going to say than, than just coming, you know, if you're afraid they won't understand the truth, or yeah. they, you know, if you're afraid they're going to get aggravated or something. Because you, you can be brutally honest, and that's not doing any... Right. Yeah. Anything, but it just it's tact. But I think a lot of people in the in the interest of trying to be tactful lie. <laughs> oh, I, yeah. I I tell you that uh you know that there's a song by Paul Jovi says lie to me and I, I tell you there's been times where you know my lesson I wanted to do my very best and I tongue tied and somebody come up and they would shake my hand and they'd say well, that was a great lesson and I just thought oh yeah. brother don't some don't compromise best, your salvation. Some of the best lies have been told out of church for years. I appreciate that, yeah. but come on now. Um, but seriously, um, there's, there's even when feelings are to be had, there's a way of, of maybe avoiding the, the, those situations. When uh, I think we've all been taught at a young age, if you don't have something nice or kind, and kind is useful, sometimes it's better not to say something, mm -hmm. or you know. But those are those moments where you know, even the times when you see a, uh, there are, our example is so important because what happens if you're teaching your kids and we should as parents about the importance of honesty because there's no sin that we can't be forgiven of if we're not honest to ourselves and God or God first and with ourselves to acknowledge it, to repent of it and make change. But the idea that you're teaching them that and then you get a call and you don't want to talk to the person and you tell your child, I'll tell them I'm not here. Something that small has an effect because if you're, I think it's Luke chapter 16, he who is faithful in the least is faithful in the much. And if you're not faithful in the small things, we don't know how much of an effect that can that can have. Right. Yeah, that's, that's such a good point. I want to, I just want to tell you that the, one of the first, what when you think about the fall of man in the garden in Genesis chapter 3, we are talking about dishonesty. Yeah. We are talking about lying because Satan comes along and changes one word of God. God said, if you eat the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt surely die. And Satan comes along in verse number 4 of Genesis chapter 3 and says, you will not surely die. And, and, and Eve is right when she says, Satan beguiled me or deceived me and I did eat. Now she's, she's not just blame shifting. She, that is true that that's what happened. You get over into the New Testament, 
And when it talks about the roles of men and women in the church, leadership role has been given to the man in in, in 1 Timothy. And you, you see that, and for Adam was first formed, then Eve, and then Eve, you know, Adam was not in, tra in, in transgression, but Eve, right? You know, the Eve, Adam was not deceived, but Eve was, and they were in transgression, but but one was deceived and one wasn't. There's a big difference there. So, so what did Satan do if he didn't outright lie? He deceived. We think of deceit as being a little bit different than a lie, but deceit is lying with more truth mixed in. Now, no. lying is outright not true. Deception, deception's worse because it's hard. It's hard to detect sometimes because it has some truth in it. It's like counterfeit money. Yeah, or it just that's right. I mean, it just shows you that the woman that was being seductress a little bit ago, she says, I paid my offerings. I oh, yeah. It's she almost like she, she checked yeah. her boxes on certain things. So this one little thing, you know, it, it can be overlooked. I've done this, but we can't justify anything in our life that we're, that, that is small enough to say, you know what, I can overlook that. I can justify that. And that's been a hard lesson. Mm -hmm. That's been a, a lesson that, you know, I've had to learn in my own life, to be totally honest and... You know, it is liberating when you're totally honest. Well, but, it is, and it's, but it's a practice that you have to get into because if you're not raised in that, oh, or, or, you don't, or maybe it's not your practice to do that, it's a habitual behavior. You just you do it not because you necessarily want to, but because you're... It's a knee-jerk reaction. You're, you're exactly. just Condition. wired that, conditioned that way. And, and it's tough. And you've got you to gotta break the bad habits. And it's just like any other habit in the Bible. All sin can be habitual. Yeah. And so we and need to break it. It starts at just a little bitty step, a little bitty motion, and then it becomes, like you said, you know, it's an habitual process where it just, yep. it does, it's just not. And at one time to be caught in something that isn't honest, the, the kind of effect, you know, I wonder honesty and truth and noble and trustworthy is so important because the hypocrisy of it all can be so detrimental to the cause of Christ. Right. If you, if you get caught, then what else have you lied about? You know, and you're, well, you damage your whole reputation, and you get known for that, and nobody can, nobody will trust you because it, because telling the truth, even if you told the truth, would be out of character. Yeah, but I'm. So, but you know, what, as people, we're going to have moments. Like I, I love how the study came up with the the husband, you know, saying that I'll be home at six, and with all things coming on, they don't make it home. Something came up, an incident came up. Was he really lying? No, he just didn't know. Now, if you said that when you knew for sure already that you were going to be there, but I've been told that. A husband saying, I'll be home in five minutes is the same thing as uh, the woman that says, I'll be ready in five minutes. <laughs> <That's>, no, <laughs> It's relative at times, but you can't go into something saying something that you know is not the case. But there are extenuating circumstances where you weren't purposefully not tell the truth. Yeah. Just something came up. And that, well, and, and, that, and when something comes up, that... People aren't going to think, well, they stood me up. Yes. No, they they would think what something happened? must be wrong. Yes. And and so if you get if you get the reputation of not keeping your appointments, they're going to think, well, you know, he's going to be fashionably late again, you know, or uh, you know, or they're going to think they must have had a flat, yeah. you know, or or something like that. Um, there's some scriptures. Let, let's share a few scriptures yeah. with you about the the emphasis here on the tongue in relationship to honesty and truth. Write down uh, Proverbs 3 and verse number 3. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck and write them on the tablet of your heart and so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. In other words, you don't let that depart out of you. You let that be a part of your life. I, you know, the Hebrew way of talking is sometimes backwards. It's sometimes given a personality. Different principles are. Wisdom is personified. Here, mercy and truth are personified. And uh, don't let them leave your company. Yeah. You keep them with you. Amen. What about Proverbs 4.24? Now, Proverbs 4.24, it says, Put away from you a deceitful mouth, and put perverse lips far from you. Now that's that's my choice. What I do with my lips, right? Yes. I'm going to put away a deceptive mouth. I don't want to be deceptive. He, they say, cut that out of your life. That has no room in our life as covenant child of God. That's not who we are. 
that's not the way we behave. Um, and 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 put perverse lips far from you. So so deception and and whatever is perverse. Now you can be perverse and joking. No, no. Now that's the part where I had to learn that you know growing up outside of the Christian home that certain jokes seem funny, but boy, does that cause uh, a detriment to the kind of character because you know I think it's in. First Corinthians 13, of course, a chapter in love that, mm -hmm. you know, we don't rejoice in iniquity, but we rejoice in the truth. And a yeah. joke sometimes is based a little bit on the what ifs, but if it's perverse, yeah. you know, it's still it's still not couth of what a Christian should be chaste in their conduct. So it's the conversation that the jokes, I think, really, this is something that I've had to really step on my toes, you know, yeah. at times, because you'll hear something and you'll think, oh, that's funny. And your knee-jerk reaction is to laugh at it. When you see it on TV, and that's what I love about TV Guardian and, and I mean, Clear Play, that you can remove that because the temptation to have a knee-jerk reaction to laugh, if you tell your kids not to talk that way, but then you laugh at seeing it. Yeah, well, and, and so you're, let's talk about your inner, inner heart and soul, learning to not find Humor. things funny that, that aren't funny to God. Yes. Let's say, though, that you've learned that that there are some things that are not funny to God, and they're not even funny to you. But then you courtesy laugh, out of out of pressure. Oh, I've done that. It just that's not right either. No, my knee jerk response is to laugh when you're uneasy, and that laughter is almost like uh, conceding to the joke. I mean, it's like you know, it's almost like bidding them good good day or yeah. Godspeed on something that's wrong, and it's just something that's and, and I, it's really hard when you just gotta and I. I gotta throw a name out there. I guess I wish I could just meet y'all could meet Danny Parrish. I mean, this guy just good as gold. He's up at Arkansas Works there, but there'd be things that happen or said or come up, and he just was just straight, he just straight. He wouldn't even give it a uh, an acknowledgement if it wasn't anything that was true, right? True or just. And I really appreciate that example. Well, uh, Proverbs chapter eight and verse number seven says, "For my mouth will speak truth. Wickedness is an abomination to my lips." And so, <clears throat> all the words of my mouth are righteousness. Nothing crooked or perverse is in them. So here, here is the excellence of wisdom. Now, this is wisdom personified again in the context. And all the words of my mouth are righteous. If we're to adopt the wisdom of, of the Bible, the wisdom of God personified into our life, we're, we're to manifest these characteristics, then our goal is to copy wisdom as is personified in the text. Um, our words need to be righteousness. Nothing crooked or perverse is in them. That needs to be our practice. And that needs to be what we strive for. What about chapter 12, 19, and 20? Okay. Chapter 12, 19, and 20. Thank you. It says, The truthful lips shall be established forever, but a lying tongue is but for a moment. Deceit is in the heart of those who devise evil, but counselors of peace have joy. Yeah. I think right there, the truthful lip, you know, it's how no matter what we do through life, if you were able to be deceitful and in that moment have dishonest gain, it would go for that moment and you think that, oh, you've attained something. But I'm wondering if we ever pass on, what's most remembered is that good, trustworthy, honest, forever we see those people that have lived in such a way that that example is forever. You know, I think yeah. that that, a, that a, a lying tongue is, you're only getting it for that, like I said, a sinful passing season. The sin, the, what's the passing pleasure of sin? You've done something. Mm -hmm. You pat yourself on the back for being dishonest in the way we'll get to in business and trying to negotiate, if you will, to a point to you're not being completely honest and um, I think that that might have got you through a moment but is it really worth this is what would a profit of man against the whole world but lost his soul right what will a man give in exchange and somehow doing that is almost expected in our society when it comes to dealings with people yeah. and so I think we got to watch out if we're Christian I think we got one more I think we got time for just one more verse oh and in Proverbs chapter 21 and verse number 6, um, the Bible says, The getting of treasures by a lying tongue is a vanity tossed to and fro of them that seek death. Now that's a characteristic of them that seek death. That's, that's what he's saying in, in Proverbs 21 and, and verse number 6. 
getting treasures by a lying tongue, which goes cor it corresponds with what you're saying there, it's a fleeting fantasy of those who seek death. I mean, who's seeking death? I love the way the Bible puts this, uh, puts sin. It puts it into a perspective. And you say, well, I'm not really seeking death. Oh, yeah, you are. It's kind of like kids when you're... When you're telling them, you, you want a spanking. No, I don't want a spanking. Yes, you do. Yes, you are. You, you must want a spanking. And, and, and they say, no, I don't want a spanking. And you say, yeah, you do, because the way you're acting. So there are, there are those who are really seeking death. Now, in summary for today's lesson. I just want to add one thing to that. The Septuagint right there read that the, those that pursue vanity on the snares of death. I like how that's put, thinking that, you know, that all is vanity. You know, if you're mm -hmm. seeking after those earthly riches, and it's like grasping the wind, it's just empty. But it's the snares that come along. For what is the, is money evil? No, but the love of money has caused, you know, is that greed. And so I think there's a snare in that I just wanted to bring out. Well, and it seems like it, in the context of the lying and the temporary nature of those things, what is permanent, what actually brings permanent joy and permanent peace and, and in our life is is honesty in our speech. Um, that is an essential element of our Christian character. That has to be in place. We have to put that into practice. And, and lying and deceit are denounced in the scriptures as being wicked and momentary and leading to death. Separation. And and by yeah. thy words thou be justified, or by thy words thou should be condemned. And and. The Bible tells us that everything that, not only everything that we do, friends, but everything that we say oh, is going to be laid open at the judgment. That Matthew 12, you know, every, yeah. word of, every, every idle word will be held to account. That's right. And every secret thing is going to be revealed. So, so I can imagine in the judgment day that God's going to say, you know what? Remember that lie you told? And then that person over there that you lied to is going to know that you lied to them if they hadn't found out already. Um, that's the part of the judgment that, because even as a New Testament Christian, there's a lot prior to becoming a Christian that I'm ashamed of. I don't want to talk about it. Yes. Um, but, but, you know, if you don't go to God and get forgiveness and, and make your purpose in your life to change, to conform to His ways and to this standard that we're talking about tonight, all that's going to be late. If you're not going to talk about it, God's going to talk about it. Well, that's why it's so I, important about walking you. in the light as He is the light, the blood of Jesus yes. Christ, that true fellowship will cleanse us of all iniquity. But there's a part about repentance and restitution mm -hmm. where, if at all possible, those that you have, try to make restitution and try to be honest because there is a great, there's, there, I've seen it where you think they would be a certain way. And it's not going to always strengthen, but it sure is a way to where they have to respect the honesty of being, being open when you might have said something, and a lot of times, you know, I know you didn't mean that, or, or, or just, so it's just cautious. This is all about seeking God's will, and the Proverbs are doing that practical knowledge. Well, I appreciate your counsel and your study for this uh, topic tonight, and we appreciate your attendance online tonight. We are fervently praying for our next um, assembly. Now, we're going to be in the parking lot Sunday at 10. We want to invite you to be with us in the parking lot. Um, we have everything that you'll need for, as far as worship supplies are concerned. Uh, we invite you to be our guest. Um, we will give a, we'll put a piece of paper out there uh, that will have a number that you can text, uh, a digital visitor card. Okay, there you go. <laughs> and, uh, and maybe a place online in the future where you can go in and log in and, and correspond with us. We'd like to dialogue with you, especially if you're, you're right here in Mount Pleasant. Uh, we'd love to visit with you over the telephone. Uh, or start up a correspondence email with you. We want to help you in your spiritual walk with God. Uh, I don't know what else I could say except to offer the invitation tonight, and that is to become a Christian. Uh, we need to understand God's grace, mercy, and love that has been extended to us through Christ on the cross. And here's how we react to that. Here's how we can respond to that great, that great grace and mercy and love. And that is by having heard the Word of God, which produces faith, Romans 10:17. We would, we would believe the Word of God with all of our heart, John 3, 16. And then we'd take those words that we believe and we would be motivated to repent of our sins, Luke 13, 3, that we'd confess with the mouth that Jesus is the Christ, Romans 10, 9, and 10, and that we'd be baptized into Christ for the remission of our sins, Acts 2, and verse number 38. 
We would rise to walk in the newness of life, Romans 6, 4 and following. And we would live and walk in the light, 1 John chapter 1. And, uh, and we'll be added to the church, Acts 2, verse 47. Uh, we'll be written in the Lamb's book of life. And, and we will know for sure that when Jesus Christ comes back or that uh, we were to die in some way, shape, form, or fashion, that we could pillow our head or go into death with a conviction and with a, a blessed assurance that, uh, that we are saved by the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we thank you for that. If you'd like to learn more about that, we'll post some links uh, at the bottom of this conversation thread. We'll, we'll put it in there. Uh, places where you can go to join us in Bible study online or to watch a video, Bible course, of how you can become a Christian. Well, we thank you for joining us tonight. and Have a good evening. And uh, we bid you Godspeed.